We were there till 1040 underneath that table. There is no way we sat there for 25 minutes without gunfire and decided, oh, we're just gonna sit here. Because not one person underneath that table said, let's go, let's run. It stopped. I mean, I think maybe if 10 minutes had gone by, we might we might have said, you know, 10 minutes, that's, there's no and gunfire. What do you base your time frame on again? What did, did you, did you look at a uh, I called my, I called as I was, as when, when we were told by run by security and got out of there, when I was running, while I was running, I phoned my daughter. And the timestamp on that is 1042. So I know that's when I got out of there because I was still running in the venue when I made that call. So, so you have you have a timestamp. Yes. And based on that, you can estimate that there was gunfire going beyond 1015 based on I get, You know what? If I had to swear under oath, I would swear under oath. I really would. And I think that a lot of people under those tables, why if, why wouldn't one of them, somebody say, wow, you know what, it stopped for a while, let's go. We had a guy shot in the chest. We wanted him out of there. So, but he was still there, nobody left. Nobody budged until they told us to run. So I'll ask the same question. Based on your personal observations, can you unequivocally state that people really were shot and it was not a fake event? Oh no, it was not a fake event. No, I saw people shot. I had a ricochet also, I think it was, I don't know, it, the next day, when we, when we were on our way back, I had a welt on my arm, like about this big, and I, uh, I, I have it on my computer at home, but it was like this big, and it was, and it raised, and I was like, what the hell is that? And I didn't even think about it until like three days later, you know, I was like, wait a minute, I didn't have that that night, and it, you know, and I had it the next day, so. So no, I mean, you know, my girlfriend, she was at the table, we separated because she took one way, I took another way, I had to catch up to the girl that was, I was with, her niece. So I went to the right and ran after her as I'm being pushed and um, I finally caught up to her. Well, they took off one way, she got underneath the table um, and another girl ran underneath the table with her and she was shot in the face and she grabbed paper towels put them up against her face and her pants the next day because she she ran to Hooters. So she ended up in Hooters in a bathroom, locked in a bathroom. They didn't let anybody in. They stayed there till like four o'clock in the morning. So they got out and she got, she went to somebody's, a friend of theirs house and they gave her some sweatpants and she showed back up holding her pants and they were soaked. So I think at first when I heard that there were other shootings in other places, I thought maybe it was people that were frantic, you know, but I don't, I don't know how you can hear bullets in any casino with the, you know, with the door shut and the, right. the machines going on. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see how that's possible. Okay. So, so. Does that, does that make you think that there, what, what would your conclusion be or your guess to, as, to explain that? How people were hearing gunshots, reporting hearing gunshots. Well, I, I I believe there was more going on that they're covering up, that they don't want us, that they're they're sticking to their you know lone gunman story. So, and I think they're sticking to it, and so everything else is like pushed off to the side. You know, and my and my uh, cousin had to come and pick somebody up that was in the uh, venue right afterwards. And she's like, well, have, you know, you need to come pick me up. We were just shot at. Well, I think it took her like 20 minutes to get there. But she's like, the strip is completely open. You know, she's like, they just let me right in during the gunfire. And she's like, I, how, why? You know, she goes, and then later through, you know, in the morning, like it was, a, it was closed, you know? And she said, that's just odd that they would let us through. And she goes, I just, you know, and then there was one uh, police officer she came across and she says, oh, I'm just going to pick up my friend over here, you know, and he goes, oh, go ahead, you know. You're a resident here? No. I come here every year for Route 91. I have cousins here. So where are you guys from, if you don't mind me saying? California. California, beautiful. Yes. Um, so you're from California and you hear that day, and what is your personal, you know, you had to guess, were they more than one, or do you yeah, believe that it's just one shooter in the Mendoza? 
Okay, I'll add. And I, and I heard what you just said. Okay. But okay. I think what I want you to be is, uh, what I, I think what I want from you is, like, maybe your personal, because what I'm getting from you okay. is that you don't believe the lone man. No. But at all times, when you were getting shot at, you were getting shot at from the Mandalay. The direction. Now, I don't the direction know. Of the I Mandalay. can't. Okay, if I was to give it a span, I mean, I'm not saying it just, I heard it straight from the Mandalay. I'm right. saying you could hear it because... While it's in front of you, you can hear shots to your right and to your left. So, so do you think there was more than one shooter? I'm just a you. I do. Yes. Did you say that? Well, yeah. Well, I believe there was one. Okay, so while you were staring at the Mandalay, you can hear shots from the right and from the left of you. Did I hear that right? It felt like, yeah, it felt like there were. It just wasn't coming from like straight ahead one window. Okay, so it that, felt like I don't know. Do you agree? It felt like it was like two. Yeah, it felt like to your right, to your left, but I wouldn't say it was to my right way over here, like people are right. saying in some of the videos, right. you know, so that's why I'm trying to say that I know it wasn't behind me, that's a fact. Okay, so behind you is away from the Mandalay. Yes, Correct. behind okay. me is uh, to the left of the stage. Okay, later on that day. Yes. Whatever, 20, 25 minutes later, you're out from underneath heard, that, I heard from a, that cave. A right. Where do you go from there? Well, we were staying at the Luxor, and when we ran out, they wanted us to go towards Hooters, but the girl that we were with, she was on the phone with her dad, he's a police officer, and he says, get inside somewhere. So we ran to MGM. Police officer here? No, okay. California. And so we ran to MGM, which... And Nobody knew any Convention business. centers got you know. Right. So, so you went to MGM. Went to MGM and got got in a room. So and, gotcha. you know, and then that's it. And then during yeah, the rest of the night, you personally did not hear any more gunshots. No, I was filming out my window. You know, I did see SWAT come in at 10:32 into the MGM. Yes. 10:32. Yes. I mean, I'm sorry, 12:32. 12:32. 12:32, and I thought. That's odd. Why are they still coming in? Why didn't SWAT go into Paddock's room? That's what? a good question. But that, yeah. Where was the SWAT team? Where? I, well, this SWAT team was coming in. Maybe they were at the MGM. MGM. <laughs> because there's that's why well, I was confused. Right, but that's 12:30. Like, wouldn't SWAT be there? I mean, this is a serious situation. Like, I, I think not enough attention has been on where is the SWAT team that night? Why weren't they at Paddock's? Why was it this like ad hoc group of people rather than right. the SWAT team? I don't know. Right. Well, well, better, better question. Why were we told? It was a SWAT team when it really wasn't. Because that's what the sheriff right. said. And he corrected himself time and time over again. He said, it's a SWAT well, team. Well, okay, so why, this is from a, a survivor's point of view, why, if you knew you didn't do anything for an hour and whatever it was, so why, if you knew that, you didn't go in the room, you didn't rush in, you didn't, like, you know, do anything, you just waited because you knew that he wasn't going to shoot anymore. Okay, so you knew he wasn't going to shoot anymore. Why aren't you down at the venue helping us? Right. Why is there nobody there? I mean, if you knew that wasn't, you guys were, it was safe, well, where, why are all these people, you know, bleeding to death? Well, I think by that time they were probably already attending because we're talking now an hour and something into the, uh, into the time frame, right? When the SWAT team finally goes okay, in Okay, yeah, there. but well, I don't know what time. I heard they weren't even on the venue till later. I, I, I've heard so many stories coming from Lombardo. I don't know what's up or down. I don't know either. I, I, is this even Vegas? That's what I want to know. But, okay, so no, no, well, the, but the storm, no, they thought right after the gunfire had stopped. Okay, so which is, their timeline is what, 10, 15? Yeah, but wait a minute. Let's look at the first timeline. The first timeline, um, the police arrive right at the same time, the security guard, which arrives with the police, and in the midst of arrival, there's a shootout from Paddock's room, and they strike the security guard on the leg. Right, That's yeah. That's me talking, yeah. by the way. So they strike the security guard on the leg, okay? And so now the security guard is a hero all throughout national television and on his way to the White House for the... Yeah. Congressional Medal of Honor. And then we find out that the security guard actually got shot six minutes before it all took place. And 
the police were nowhere to be found because they had no clue that bullets had been fired on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay for six minutes. Because the first right. time the police knows about the shooting, right, is when cops at the venue say, we're getting shot at on the radio. So that's the first time they find out about it. And that's six minutes from the time the Campos got shot upstairs. Right, right. Okay? So now it takes the police six more minutes after that. If we just give them the benefit of the doubt, okay? I don't, I'm not sure the guy's name is Lombardo. But just giving him the benefit of the doubt that his name really is Lombardo and that it really took six minutes after the first valley of the gunfire, that's 12 minutes for the cops to find where he is shooting from. Because 11 minutes from the time that Campos got shot, 11 minutes after that, there's a cop that goes on the radio and says, I'm on the 31st floor and I can hear the gunshots coming from a floor above me. So that's 11 minutes and it takes him about another minute to get to that floor above him. So that's a whole full 12 minutes and now it's when we finally find out where the guy's at. So who dialed 911? When did they dial right, 911? Right. How did they ever get to 911? Right, 911 right. Why, if they did dial 911, right. why didn't the police dispatcher ever say to the cops, oh, we know where it's coming from. We just received the call. So there's just a lot, but you know my story. I wanted right. to know your story. Well, that, I mean, and that was, I mean, you Be, know. Besides everything you just told me, my, is there My anything? point that 15 minutes, I mean, right after when they knew, I mean, there wasn't apparently any gunfire for a while, you know, and you hear, you hear on dispatch, you hear him say, forget them, we are got to get this guy, which, okay, I get, I understand, you need to get this guy to keep, you know, him to stop shooting. Mm -hmm. But from that, from that time, he apparently stopped. Yeah. Where, so, so you that, know, yeah. why aren't they in the venue? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't get that. They should at least have some in the venue coming in. Yeah, it's all lies. You know, there it's was none when lies. I took off. It's just all a bunch of lies. Besides all of this, is there anything, one thing particular, one thing that you say to yourself, I am convinced, Joe, that there was another shooter because of this, and I didn't want to say it, but I'm going to tell it. Uh -huh. No? Okay, no. Well, the one, the one okay, thing so you the think one I'm going to think you're first. crazy. Okay. Okay. No, the one thing at first when I was in the middle of that, okay, and this is why at first I thought, what? They one, okay. I, you know, this is what I tried to convince myself about one shooter. During each break, during, during, you know, each round, there wasn't any more shooting going on. You know, and I'm thinking, this has to be, you know, that's weird. But if there were, if there were more short sh shooters, why didn't I hear it? But then I started thinking, well, wait a minute. I mean, there's just, there's too much going, there's too much going on during one shoot, during the rounds for it to be one shooter. Right. You know, you would think that you would hear it come from, if he's spraying, you would think you would hear it come around and go back or right. whatever. You didn't hear that. It's like you heard it just all around. Right. So. So if he's spraying, you were there, uh -huh. you know better than I do. How close were you all standing together that if he was spraying, do you think all these people here would have gotten hit? Yeah, or, see, and it doesn't make sense because if he was spraying, it would have been like a row of people. Right. You know, and I'm it wasn't. Thinking, I'm thinking. No, and yeah. you could hear it in I different mean, spots. At the same time, you can hear it to your right, you can hear it to your left, you can hear it in front, you can hear it hitting things, and it's like... You know what 58 people look you know, like. You know, yeah. Right? There's yeah. about how many of us here? Right. Okay? Uh -huh. So if we all gather together, <laughs> and the guy stands over there and says, shooting over here with a machine gun... You know? Now, add, I don't know, how many people do you think were there? You were there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you talking about at the concert? Yeah, right there in that in that section where you were at, at eyesight. Uh, looking out in the crowd. Though. Yeah, like right there. Like if you were to look over your right shoulder, take yourself back there again. Well, if I you're looking in front of me. So. All right, so you're way over. Okay. You can't look to his right. <laughs> so you're looking straight ahead, and what so, are you? Oh, uh, gosh. Thousands of people. I don't even right know. Right there in front of you. Yes. Yeah. And somebody spraying in there, what do you think would be like the numbers? A lot more than 
Yeah, it is. 58, right? Yeah, a lot yes. more. I just don't see it. I see, even when I look at videotape, uh -huh. right? And I'm examining, and in some videos, you could actually see some bullet striking the floor. So by the way, I don't believe any of this was fake. In yeah. fact, I believe that people needed to get hurt, okay? They needed to get hurt, okay? But we'll talk about that on Monday. You gotta tune in for that one. Anyways, um, even when you look at the bullet strikes on the floor, you hear da 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 da, but then like one bullet strike. <laughs> you're like, and you're like, zoom in, you slow it down, you wanna see another bullet strike anywhere in the 100 yards of video that you have, but you don't. And I just don't get that. Yeah. I just can't figure that out. Didn't they say there was 1,100 casings found in his room or something like that? I don't see that on I pictures say, either. I, yeah, I mean, they, they said something about you know? 1,100 casings, and if you had 500 people wounded, yeah. that would be every other bullet hit somebody. Yeah. yeah. If there was 1,100 right. casings, right? Well, if all injuries came from a bullet strike. Right. right, exactly. And, you know, most of those people were stuck in the area we were at. I mean, there, there were no way, no exits. You had to go behind you, and you had to run. Oh, you know, I'm, you know I'll, I'll tell you the reason I, I'm talking is because I'm hoping that more survivors will come out because I do know for a fact there are videos nobody has seen. There are stories that nobody has heard, you know, yeah. heard. You know, we probably have seen and heard a lot because we are, we are survivors. We have groups. And um, it's a family now. I mean, the... We are a family, and it's a new place for them to feel safe and talk to each other, but I, you know, I wish they would come forward. Why do you, you know, think... Uh, the Vegas Memorial on the Strip, did, do you know if they gave all the crosses and stuff to the survivors that were there? They said, oh. I heard they moved them. I don't know. That looks like yeah, a I've they, had, never. they had all the crosses right. and flags. I'm sure and they stuff. gave them. I heard that they were, I so thought they were going to go theory. somewhere else, and if they didn't, you know, they weren't, they were going to go back to the guy. More, more yeah, I was real. hoping that they yeah. gave the family. Right. Right. I mean, right. Was, it is. Because they cleaned it up. Why do you think, why do you think more, yeah. why do you think more survivors, and he's a survivor as well? Yes, he's a survivor why, too. This is for both of you. Why do you think, why do you think it is that, I mean, you're just saying like, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot more video evidence. There's a lot more survivors that really haven't been public about their, you know, story. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think the survivors, the other ones, aren't coming forward or aren't sharing those videos for the people here that clearly just want to, they want to help. They want to help find the answers that everybody else wants as well. Why do you think that is? They're probably scared of uh, what might happen, or they're scared of the the police department, or the FBI, or who, who, anybody, everybody. Yeah, okay. they're scared of retrib like somebody make, yeah. making them pay for sharing that information. Uh huh. Are you are you from here? Are you in yes, Vegas? Yes, I live here. Okay. We, I, I talked to my Lyft driver on the way here, and he indicated something like that. Like people are afraid here of the of the police force. Uh, basically, if they come forward, the police force here, and if you watch Randy, Ram Ramsey Dennison's, you know, documentary, I just watched, yes, yeah, please. like, like it, 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 I, if I lived here, I don't live here, I'm, I'm from Arizona, but if I lived here, I would feel the same way. Do you think that's, that's the basis is people here that are here locally are afraid of the, of, of somebody making them pay for sharing information, whereas those of us that are from out, out of state are a little bit safer and maybe we can come forward? I don't feel, I mean, I don't feel safe. I mean, <laughs> Those two, those incidents, you know, happened in my state. Yeah. So, and I think that, you know, they, we think that there could be something to that. Yeah. I mean, some of it is not a, doesn't seem like a coincidence. Yeah. So how do you, yeah. how do you think us in like the research community then can better support those in the survivor community? Like, how can we better get together and support each other because we all really have a common goal here, right? And that's answers. I think if there was a safe place that these survivors could go that they could tell their story and knew that it would not, you know, for now, 
and knew that their name would be wouldn't be involved, but they can get their story out. I think they would. I think right now they don't trust anybody, and the reason they stay in these groups is because they trust survivors. So they're not telling their story. No. You know, a lot of the pictures that at the beginning, you saw. You know, everybody said, "Yo, know, send it to the FBI. Send it to the FBI. Have you told the FBI?" Because they believed in the FBI at that time. You know, now there's a. They're not. Right. They're not believing the stories anymore. They're yeah. thinking that there's more to this. Yeah. You you agree? With that? I agree. I, I pretty much don't trust anybody. <laughs> yeah. Especially the police. You're yeah. in good company or here. FBI, <laughs> But uh, I think they're afraid of, like, the conspiracy theorist people. They're always like, I don't want them in our group. Mm. And, uh, Are you guys part of the uh, same, like, survivors groups? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I've never met her. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and my wife can be here. She's okay. Yeah. She's also, she was also there that, that Me day? Me and my wife are there. Okay. So, all right. We probably are in... We probably are. Yeah. Just... Yeah. There's yeah. so many of them. groups. Okay. Uh -huh. So many groups. Yeah. I actually started one. It's called Every Story Matters. Okay. On Facebook or? Yeah. On okay. Facebook. Every Route 91. Matters. Route 91, Las Vegas. Every Story Matters. Oh, okay. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll join it now? I might, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, yeah. some of the stories, some of the things I... You know, you read some very interesting things. People saying, you know, there was another shooter. They saw people in vet. You see, you hear some really crazy stuff that you have not heard anywhere else. You know, so it's like, wow. I mean, I read and go, that is crazy. So. You, sir, what, what's your name? If you don't mind asking. Um, my name is Shannon. Shannon, mm -hmm. you you mentioned fear of the like the conspiracy theorists. Are there certain ones that are prevailing that are concerning to your community where you don't you don't want to come forward because because of those ones? Uh, I don't know any. All I know, them, I've talked to a few of them, but yeah. I'm, I'm not going to mention their names. Okay, but. Uh, you know, they they don't want. Are there certain are there certain theories, like the theories themselves, that that are more concerning than others? I think mostly is they don't believe really what happens. Yeah. Is the, what, the people that don't believe yeah. it actually happened. They, yeah, they think just it was like a, crisis actors. That's not true. Okay. Even down in Florida or anywhere, they think it's crisis actors. And they wasn't here, so they don't. Right. Know. Yeah. I don't even have well, video. Yeah. But you, you, know. you were, so you were there and you took video. Is that what you said? Yeah, I only have one video of me and my wife. Okay. In a hiding. Hiding. Okay. And has that video has that video been shared? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I shared it on Joe's page. Once. Oh, Joe's got it. Okay. Great. I mean, as long as it's, I think getting that kind of information out, oh, the community, yeah. super crucial because, you know, a lot of these people, well, you know, there might be some. Some theorists uh, among us, for sure, but oh, yeah. a lot of the people here, at least the ones that I know, are dedicated to actual truth. You know, and and Which when you talk about yeah. yeah, when you talk about crisis actors, most of the people that I that I work with don't don't believe in the crisis actor theory. Yeah. Um, so just for you, there are those of us out there that are supporting you and That's want good. to get to the bottom. And I can't really apologize on behalf of those people, but I'm so I'm, I am sorry that that's happened to you. Oh, yeah. It's not really fair to you, um, and it's not fair to us that of, of those, those of us that want to get to the truth. You know what I mean? So, Most of the time, I just ignore it. Yeah. Like, oh, there's another. Me too. One. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. keep there's living. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which describes this situation. Yeah, great. So, so you, I didn't hear your story if you told it earlier. Oh, so you do. were in the VIP section, you said? Yeah, we, me and my wife actually. It was a last minute thing. And um, right. my friend called me up and said, oh, you want some VIP tickets? Sure. But my wife is usually the one that won't go to concerts because she's got tons of anxiety. And okay. Anyway, so we got there 30 minutes before it all happened. We got in. And this is the weird part. Okay, so my wife dropped me off at the gate in the very front by the Las Vegas Boulevard, gate two. She went to park. And I usually don't let her do that. She said, oh, yeah, I'm going to go park in the back. And I'll meet you at the gate 4A. So I got our passes. I went to walk back there. 
And she said, oh, the, uh, she called me. The policeman said, oh, you can't stand here. It's, it's too dangerous. I don't know why he would say that. That was weird. But, um, okay. so they escorted her around the front where I, where I was in the first place. And so we got in. Oh, uh, got to be up and take, got some drinks and watched a few songs and... Jason Aldean was already on when you Jason got there? was already on. Okay, all right. And uh, we saw the Barstool song. Then he played the song that where the machine gun started happening. And that's when we hit the deck uh, in the VIP tent, got under a table. I thought I was going to die. And you thought you were going to die? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. She actually was stronger. She usually looks for a way out at the beginning like where's your exit what if something happened but this time we got there so late she couldn't do that so uh and amazingly she she was strong it was like we got to get out of her she's a teacher by the way okay and, uh, so she's got training with kids get them out so she, usually she's scared to death but she's like we got to get out of here we can't stay in one place we saw we heard it wow. shooting all over so we went after it stopped we went out of the VIP tent we saw some bodies we stepped over it was shot and that's sort of weird and then we saw the police had these big guns too and like whoa were they shooting the police had yeah they had these uh, big, big rifles i was like okay where did you get them that sort of scared where, where me. Where was that? Why I was like, outside the venue? Outside the VIP tent. Okay. There was and you were on the inside. VIP tent on the east side or the or the west side? I um, think there were two. By, by there? the Las Vegas Strip. Oh, okay. On the the strip actual side. Tent, tent. Okay. So close to Mandalay Bay, yeah. but kind of back from the stage. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. All right. And we were right on the corner. You can see the Mandalay Bay right there. Okay. So uh, anyway, we, we got out. We saw everybody. So you exited... Out. Going north, going north, and you and you had to step over bodies. So there were there were bodies that way. Like when you came uh -huh. out of VIP and turned north. Okay, All like, right. Here's the exit. I knew they were right there. Mm. Like they had been. They had been really. Yeah, you could tell they shot. It's bleed. How um, and have you spoken to uh, either the police department? Have they interviewed you or the or the FBI or has anybody spoken to you or reached out to you? No. I did talk to the police one time because, like, just recently in January, yeah, because I, I contacted them on Facebook. It's like, well, that's the wrong information about Melissa Ramez. She's one of the fifty-eight. Yes. I was like, you claimed her dead in another location. She was actually dead in oh, this location. Okay. And they, they called me back and explained it. I was like, well, the coroner was here. They took the body there and they, they claimed the body. It. Okay. But that's exactly where they found her. Where we were that night. Hmm. And that came later on in the night we saw. So you her. you spoke to the police department to set them straight on the yeah. record as best you could. And they were but really they, nice to me. Okay. All right. They, but nobody from the FBI has reached out to you or anything like that. No. Um, and and how how are you dealing? Like I mean, how are you? When you stepped over bodies, most most people don't uh, have to do that, and they're maybe for their whole life. I was lives, in right? shock. I was. Huh? I didn't. I didn't know what. I just thought he was going to die. That's all. Yeah. You did? And, uh, yeah. And uh, and I didn't notice I was hurt until we got over to Hooters later You were hurt? Oh, uh, yeah. I got a ricochet in my knee. Okay. And uh, I didn't notice that until we got over to Hooters. I was like, my knee hurts, and it was all bloody. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, I took pictures of it. Did you? Okay. Get on the ambulance? Uh, no. I didn't actually go to the doctor's the next day because I cleaned it up myself. Gotcha. Yeah, a lot of people, even uh, Corey, who is also, also here, a survivor, she said she got a ricochet injury also on her arm. Heard about that. So I, I guess there were there were probably a lot more injuries than they even accounted for. I mean, you didn't you didn't let the police department know that you got injured by a ricochet. Yeah. She didn't either. I talked to her yesterday. Actually, I, my wife reported that. She did because we got a number okay. of uh, for injuries and stuff for, like yeah. that. Okay. So okay. she reported it. Oh, she did. Okay. So they are aware of it. We have a doctor. Okay. They x-rayed it and all that. And you're, you're, you're fine. It was just superficial? It took forever to heal, though. It did? And okay. It, and it's sort of numb at times. Oh, really? Okay. All right. So. Okay. 
Well, thank you. It was Shannon, right? Shannon. All right. Thank you very much. Is Andrea. Andrea. Okay. So. Thank you very much for sharing your story. Yeah. I do appreciate it. And what's oh, yeah. your name? My my name is Joel. Joel. Yes. Do you have a YouTube channel? I do.